Hours after the 2001 attacks in New York and Washington, NATO's Secretary General expressed the alliance's unity with America. NATO solidarity remains the essence of our alliance. Our message to the people of the United States is that we are with you. Robertson believed invoking Article 5 was the only way to express that solidarity. A day after the attacks, he delivered his historic statement. Article 5 of the Washington Treaty stipulates that in the event of attacks falling within its purview, each ally will assist the party that has been attacked by taking such action as it deems necessary. Accordingly, the United States NATO allies stand ready to provide the assistance that may be required as a consequence of these acts of barbarism. Ironically, when NATO was formed in 1949, many officials in Washington were against Article 5, fearing US involvement in foreign wars. 52 years later, it was the other way round. NATO itself was taken aback by what happened. And I think in the desire to, to appear strong and united and supportive, Article 5 was the one thing NATO could do easily, so it did it. A month after 9-11, NATO sent early warning planes to patrol the skies above America to deter further attacks. But soon NATO troops landed in Afghanistan, initially in a US-led mission. But in 2003, under a UN mandate to keep the country secure and free from terrorism. At its height, 130,000 NATO troops were on the ground. In 2015, that mission was replaced with one focusing on training Afghan forces. It ended in chaos and humiliation in August this year. Nearly 20 years of commitment and cost ended in defeat. Against our adversaries, our foes, uh, our enemies, uh, NATO now looks like a, a weak organisation that doesn't do what it says it'll do. It doesn't see through to its mission objectives being su successfully achieved. And that is, of course, very damaging. 9-11 changed the way many countries evaluate, threat and defend themselves, and NATO has had to adjust as well. It was an alliance designed simply to confront the Soviet Union and its allies. But 9-11 changed that for good. Those terror attacks drew it into a long-term conflict which it is seen to have lost. There is mistrust between allies. Morale has been degraded. The alliance's deterrence capabilities may have been weakened. And that may encourage NATO's enemies. Simon McGregor Wood, TRT World, London. After that very uh, newsworthy press conference yeah. yesterday, the Russian ambassador came out and accused you and Blumenthal of essentially inciting nuclear war. How do you respond to him? Well, uh, Dick and I didn't move any tactical nuclear weapons to Belarus. <laughs> so the bottom line is Putin is playing a game. Every time we want to send any weapon, that's going to be World War III. You know, if you send in tanks, that's a new game. If you do the high Mars, every time we try to help Ukraine evict the Russians, they threaten the West. Here's what I think is real. According to President Biden, the use of a tackler nuclear weapon by Russia is becoming a more real scenario as Ukraine gains momentum on the battlefield. 
So I'm letting the Russian generals know, if you follow the order of Putin to blow up the nuclear facility, the plant, to radiate Europe, or you drop a tactical nuclear weapon to turn around the war you're losing, I consider that an attack on NATO, and Senator Blumenthal, a Democrat, agrees. You cannot irradiate half of Europe and expect NATO to sit on the sidelines. So it's a warning to the generals that if you follow this order, then all hell is gonna fall on Russian soldiers inside of Ukraine. What should the red line be for President Biden for America? You know, there are some reports that chemical weapons may have already been used, will be used. <laughs> Where's the red line? When should America respond? Well, I think if you do anything to attack neighboring countries, an attack on NATO would be what? Having a radioactive cloud fly over the country and, you know, destroy the quality of life. This idea of using a nuclear weapon to turn around a conventional loss on the battlefield is getting real. Moving the weapons into Belarus, he's testing us at every turn. So Dick and I, Blumenthal, are trying to say checkmate to the Russian generals. Go down this road at your own peril. They're losing on the battlefield. Their ability to decapitate the Kyiv uh, government fails spectacularly. Now they're losing ground every day. Over time, I think the Ukrainians are gonna break through uh, to Mariupol and the Russians are gonna be cut off from their supply routes inside of Ukraine, uh, inside of Crimea. And we live in a dangerous world, but I just want the Russians to know that if you explode a nuclear weapon in Ukraine, the effects will be all over Europe NATO nations, and you will be at war with NATO. You know, as far as the Republican Party goes, you have been very outspoken on the need to uh, fund Ukraine militarily yeah. and economically uh, in post-reconstruction. Um, how do you think Trump and the rest of the <coughs> House GOP, how are they going to square, how do you square your position with some people that are very loud advocates for not continuing that support? Well, I'm right and they're wrong. That's how you square it. <laughs> so, now, President Trump provided lethal weapons to the Ukrainians on his watch. If it were not for the uh, anti-tank weapons, um, what do you call that? The Javelin. Yeah. A lot of kids named Javelin in Ukraine right now, by the way. That's like the most popular new name. The Javelin anti-tank weapons that Trump provided slowed the assault on Kyiv. Now, President Biden has been providing weapons late. We should have had the F-16s uh, a year ago, ready to go. Air cover's missing here. To my Republican colleagues, the best way to expand a war is to allow a bad guy to get away with taking territory by force. I'm gonna write a book, World War II for Dummies. <laughs> if you think Putin is gonna stop in Ukraine, you're not listening to what he said. But if Ukrainians can stop him, China is less likely to go into Taiwan. To all the China hogs out there, how do you square having a budget that reduces the U.S. Navy from 298 ships to 291? How do you square the idea you want to stand up to China if you're willing to give Putin Ukraine? It makes no sense. I think the American people understand no Americans are dying. All they want is our technology and our weapons. They're doing the fighting and the dying. And if they can stop Putin, the world will be a better place. Senator, the Republican Party is moving away from the, the tradition of Ronald <laughs> Reagan and robust uh, foreign policy, a muscular foreign policy of you and the late Senator John McCain, the <laughs> wingman on foreign yeah. policy, very hawkish. Uh, we, there was a poll out last week from the Pew organization that says 44% of Republic, Republicans say we are providing too much money for, to Ukraine right now. You and Dick Blumenthal are threatening to go to war if they use nukes. Will the rest of the Congress and the, the American people, as reflected in the Congress, be behind you? Well, I, I'm hoping that uh, President Biden will come out and say what I'm saying. To the Russians, if you explode a tactical or nuclear device in Ukraine, you'll be at war with NATO.
uudestaan ja uudestaan ja uudestaan. J. Robert Oppenheimer decided to test the plutonium bomb, or gadget, in the desert of the Alamogordo bombing range about 240 miles from Los Alamos. Oppenheimer named the site Trinity, inspired by John Donne's poetry, Batter My Heart, Three-Personed God. Elsie McMillan asked her husband Ed what to expect. Things were moving fast now. There soon would be a test near Alamogordo at White Sands the very place we had visited with carefree abandon a few years ago. I asked Ed in all innocence what would happen. It seemed an easy question with a simple answer. Knowing that it was an atomic bomb they were testing should have made me more aware of what would be involved. It was difficult for Ed to tell me. He finally answered, there will be about 50 of us present, key workers. We ourselves are not absolutely certain what will happen. In spite of calculations, we are going into the unknown. We know that there are three possibilities. One, that we will all be blown to bits if it is more powerful than we expect. If this happens, you and the world will be immediately told. Two, it may be a complete dud. If this happens, you will also be told. Third, it may, as we hope, be a success. We pray without loss of any lives. In this case, there will be a broadcast of the world with a plausible explanation for the noise and the tremendous flash of light which will appear in the sky. With our alarm set for 2.30 a.m., Ed would leave at 3.15. We did not want to allow much time. We did not want to say goodbye. 